Gunmen attack army camp in Imo. Soldiers feared dead. Voter apathy, late arrival of election materials, Ma Plateau local government polls. Senate convenes emergency session on local government autonomy debate. Away from Nigeria, Turkey begins evacuation of nationals from Lebanon. Hello again and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I am Aisha Salihu. The news in detail. We we'll begin with matters of security. Gunmen have reportedly attacked a Hime Mbano local government area of Imo State, leaving many soldiers dead. The attack was said to have occurred at the army camp in community in the community on Tuesday night. In a video circulating online, the gunmen could be seen chanting battle songs while setting several operational vehicles on fire. Gunmen could be heard chanting we are the angels. The angels are here. The army has run away. Why are they running? They should stand and face us. This comes days after the House of S House of Senate, Frank Ibeziman, ex-lawmaker who represented Okigwe Senatorial Zone in the Ninth Assembly and the National Open University Center in Ezeoke Nsu, a Hime Mbano local government area, were set ablaze. The Nigerian army and the police are yet to comment on the development. A 45-year-old ward head, Usamatu Adamu of Runka village in Safana, Lika government area of Kasina State, has been arrested by the Kasina State Police Command in connection with a suspected case of criminal conspiracy and kidnapping. Preliminary investigations revealed his alleged involvement in the criminal conspiracy and kidnapping of four persons. The suspect, now residing at Sabongida village in Igabe local government area of Kaduna State, was tracked and arrested based on the credible intelligence on October 3, 2024. The spokesman of the Kasuna State Police Command, Abubakar Sadiq, paraded the suspect on Tuesday alongside two of his accomplices. According to Sadiq, the suspect was arrested after a painstaking investigation linking him to several kidnapping incidents in Runko village, Safana local government area of the state. Still on security matters, police in Ogun state have paraded a suspected serial killer and armed robber who specialized in robbing and killing of young girls after raping them. Ogun state commissioner of police, Abiodun Alamutu, disclosed that a suspect, Philip Ogunaike, a 29-year-old young man, has been arrested by men of the Ogun State Police Command after he killed three young girls in similar circumstances. Trustee Ves Abbas Ibrahim Dalibi now reports. While leading men of the Ogun State Police Command to the spot where the suspect dumped his victims, the Commissioner of Police, Abiodun Alamutu, said the suspect is responsible for some of the cases of missing person in Abekuta metropolis. Creating an environment where we include all stakeholders, particularly the mosque, the churches, our religious leaders, our traditional leaders, to do more of sensitization. Because I, if a 29-year-old person can the so atlas to carry out such uh, killings. It is actually a disturbing trend. But unfortunately, these victims are all innocent um, kids. He said the suspect usually lured youngers to isolated areas, kidnap them, demand for ransom from their families, rape them, and later kill them. If we need to escalate this, so that uh, our youth will, will be reminded that the only road to success is hard work. CP also appealed to parents to always be security conscious and train their children to avoid going out with strangers. The suspect on his part 
confessed to be a member of secret court and that his accomplice is currently at large. Because of the bad gang that, that we used to join, that, that, is what, that, that is what used to lead us to, that's what lead us to those things. Because I know if I had not joined by gang and I had not used to follow those people that used to do bad things, I know that I may not be able to do all these things. If they want to give us judgment, they, they should just give us, they should go and kill us in it because they are the ones that lead me to that stupid things. The police said the suspect will be arraigned in court after the conclusion of investigation. Abbas Ibrahim Alibi, Trust TV. The Bernou state government said it is committed to tackling the spread of cholera outbreak in communities affected by flood. The state commissioner of health stated this when he received essential medical supplies from UNICEF to address the rising cases of cholera in the state. The donations worth 113 million naira, according to UNICEF, is to help tackle the deadly disease spread and to enhance prevention and treatment of patients. The items provided include water diarrhea kits, beds, cholera response kits, among others. We have uh, now uh, delivered uh, 300,000 uh, dosage of cholera vaccine uh, for population and those vaccines have already been administered or like, you know, it's an oral vaccine, so they were put in mouth. Now we are also bringing other uh, additional doses. As I was coming here, I also came to know that some additional doses are coming. I, so another 600,000 doses are also coming. This is what we call critical placement. When you have, when you suspect such things are happening. And uh, I'm not surprised. UNICEF is always planning ahead and thinking ahead. And they have a robust system of responding to such uh, events. Matters. Accreditation and voting have commenced in the local government election across the 17 local government areas of Plateau State. The election was earlier scheduled to start by 8 a.m. on Wednesday, but late arrival of ad hoc officials from the Plateau State Independent Electoral Commission has affected the commencement of the exercise as scheduled. Trustee reports that voter apathy has substantially impacted the election in most of the polling units visited. 11 political parties are participating in the election with voting underway to elect chairman and councillors from the 17 local government areas of the state. And earlier, we spoke to Trust TV's reporter in Jos Adomusa and he gave us an update on the elections. Take a look. Well, uh, at the moment, uh, following the complaint by uh, many electorates uh, on the issue of uh, late arrival of uh, election material, I've just uh, listened to uh, the chairman of the Plateau State uh, Independent Electoral Commission uh, also acknowledge uh, the uh, late arrival of uh, the election material. But he said that uh, uh, this development was as a result of uh, the delay in the supply of the election material by uh, their uh, contractors. But he also assured people that uh, they are doing uh, everything possible uh, to rectify uh, the problems and ensure that uh, uh, no, nobody is disenfranchised. So everything at the moment uh, is going well, uh, if not for the uh, issue of uh, the arrival of uh, the uh, election material. Mm. Ad Adomusa, you have just confirmed that uh, the officials have also confirmed the, the late arrivals of materials. I'd like to hear from you. Is there somewhat an extension of time so that it would allow for people to vote since uh, time has already been wasted? Well, I cannot independently say that uh, probably there will be an extension of time mm. because he has not uh, said anything with regard to that. But uh, I knew that uh, he was not happy with uh, the development and that was why he said uh, when uh, the material even arrived, 
they started uh, distributing them to the farthest local government so that uh, even if at the end of the day they are able to rectify the problem, uh, the local government that are close to the commission will quickly also get their own material. So at the moment we cannot confirm uh, whether or not uh, there will be an extension of time. But I know that uh, from what uh, they have said earlier, the election is expected to stop by 3 p.m. Okay, okay. Adam Musa, what about the security situation in the polling units at the moment, the ones you have visited? Well, uh, the one I have visited, I saw a lot of uh, uh, security personnel, mm. including police and uh, other, other uh, personnel of uh, other security agencies. Uh, everything is peacefully. Uh, we have not had any report of violence uh, during the uh, election. Okay. So, uh, you, yeah. Just before I let you go, I'd like to hear your take on the voter apathy. What do you think underscored this voter apathy? Could it be because of the late arrival of election materials or people are just not willing to go out to take part in the franchise? Well, there, there are a lot of factors uh, from uh, what I have gathered uh, during uh, my visit to some of these uh, polling units. Uh, some voters will tell you that uh, they don't have confidence in government uh, completely, especially those that I met on the road, that uh, why are you not uh, going uh, to participate in the election? They will tell you that, no, uh, what is the essence of going to vote? because they don't have confidence in the government they have been suffering uh, some of them even attributed uh, uh, the, the, the problem to the problem of this uh, full subsidy mm. uh, some even say that uh, they don't have even money to transport themselves to uh, their polling units so they don't see any reason while mm. some are also attributing it to uh, the issue of uh, okay because uh, this is uh, a particular party uh, maybe ruling the state so there is no need for them to even go and vote. They cited some of uh, the elections that uh, uh, were held last week, where if you have an APC governor, so all the chairman and councillors will also be what uh, the APC councillors and chairman. So if it is PDP, you also have the same. So they said that there is no need for them to even go and waste their time, simply because uh, they know that already those who are contesting on the platform of uh, the PDP will definitely uh, declare winner at the end of the day. The Senate is currently in a closed uh, session over a debate on financial autonomy to local government areas. Senator Tony Warrior from Anambra North during the commencement of plenary on Wednesday through orders 41 and 51 of the Senate standing rooms I lagged in a motion that some state houses of assembly were enacting laws to twat the implementation of the Supreme Court judgment. Senator Moye informed the Senate that his motion was co-sponsored by nine other senators. He specifically alleged that some state governors were already using the House of Assembly to enact laws that would mandate respective local government councils in their states to remit monies into state and local government joint accounts. Immediately after his submission, Senator Damu Alero from Kebi Central raised the constitutional point of order for stoppage of debate on the motion. Senator Alero cited Section 287 of the 1999 Constitution that makes Supreme Court judgment enforceable across the country and stressed the need to over, not to overflog the issue during plenary. On the motion by uh, distinguished Senator Tony Woye, on the creation of a, a local government account and, uh, and uh, in an attempt to circumvent the Supreme Court uh, decision that money should go directly to the accounts of local governments in the country. And so we have uh, deliberated on it. Uh, we have uh, uh, come to uh, the reasonable position that the Supreme Court of Nigeria uh, is a final court of the land and that they cannot make a, a, a pronouncement that will not be uh, uh, enforced. So in other words, the Nigerian Senate stands solidly behind the Supreme Court decision on its efforts through a judicial pronouncement to sanitize the administration of local governments in the country and stop for the abuse of local government funds. So we stand solidly behind the Supreme Court of Nigeria. In addition to that, we have looked at the motion, and we agree that some of the prayers in the motion 
as such that could conflict with the existing regulations, including the Constitution. Operatives of the Enugu Zonal Directorate of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission have arrested 44 suspected internet fraudsters at different locations of Eponyi and Anambra State. They were arrested in the early hours of September 28 and 29, 2024, following the actionable intelligence linking them to suspected online criminal activities. Upon arrest, Preliminary investigations showed that the suspects took advantage of social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook to defraud unsuspecting victims. The commission in a statement said while some of the suspects specialized in using fake identities to engage foreign nationals in romantic affairs with the intention to defraud them, others were found with fraudulent documents in their devices. Other items recovered from them include laptops and different brands of sophisticated mobile phones. EFCC said they will be charged to court as soon as investigations are concluded. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Still to come. Nigeria's growing housing deficit, a central theme in commemorating this year's Habitat Day. More news on return. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thanks for staying. If you're just joining us, this is the news update on Trust TV. Let's have another look at some of our top stories. Gunmen attack camp. Army camp in Imo. Soldiers feared dead. Voter apathy. Late arrival of election materials. Ma Plateau local government polls. And to other stories, in commemoration of this year's World Habitat Day, stakeholders are calling for a more inclusive and comprehensive approach to tackle Nigeria's housing deficit, especially with the nation's rapidly growing population. Trustee Vis Dorcas Yakobo spoke with estate developers and Nigerians about the challenges young people face in accessing affordable urban housing. Take a look. Despite several government initiatives like the National Housing Fund, Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, and Family Homes Funds, Nigeria's housing deficit remains at a staggering 22 million units, with many citizens still living in slums and unhealthy environments. As a signatory to Article 25 of the 1948 UN Declaration, which enshrines housing as a basic human right, and with this right reflected in the 1999 Nigerian Constitution, stakeholders are urging the government to declare a state of emergency on housing. These years' World Habitat Day theme, Engaging Youth to Create a Better Urban Future, highlights the critical role young people play in shaping tomorrow's cities. With rapid urbanization, UN Habitat predicts that by 2030, 60% of urban residents will be under 18, especially in Africa and Asia. This makes it crucial to factor youth needs in urban planning. In Nigeria's capital, Abuja, residents express varying views on the housing crisis and its impact on the country's future. In Nigeria, you see estates that have up to 200 buildings, 300. Out of those numbers, maybe about five of them is being uh, uh, habited by human beings. Others are reptiles. And builder doesn't consider that it's money they use in building this. It's not true because I that is talking to you now, I have brought a company all the way from abroad to come to Nigeria to handle housing projects. And I know the conditions we are given. When you be given a condition that if after doing the project, you won't even make something out of yourself, you will not like to involve yourself on that. Residents have expressed frustration over the rising cost of living in urban areas and the government's inability to make housing more accessible. In response to these concerns, Trust TV spoke with estate developers to explore potential solutions and gain their insights on the issue. The governments are not doing enough for to cater for shelter for young people in Nigeria because when you look at the program assigned, designed for that, even the Federal Mortgage Bank, just a simple two-bedroom flats are going for 30 million naira. And when you look at the income of an average person in the country, you see that they are not ending up to close to 5 million naira in a year. When it comes to mortgage, in Nigeria, a lot of people feel the only people who are 
advantaged to accessing mortgage are only civil servants, which is not quite uh, correct. A developer says it's critical for youths to get involved in the conversations and actions that will determine the future of cities. As a young person, so long as you can earn a decent income, whether as a business owner, whether as an employee in the private sector, or whether as a civil servant, the first thing you begin to think about is, I need to own a house. Not necessarily because you must live in the house, but because when you own a house, most especially riding on the wings of mortgage, which you have the advantage of paying over a long period of time. In May 2024, no fewer than 86 illegal squatters were evicted from makeshift apartments on the Dolphin Bridge in Ikoyi, where they had been paying 250,000 naira annually for their spaces. World Habitat Day 2024 offers a critical moment to reflect on the transformative impact of urbanization and the role of youth in shaping this change. By empowering young people through participatory processes and leadership opportunities, we can create a more inclusive, sustainable and prosperous urban future for all. Dr. Siakubu, Trust TV News, Abuja. In business, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has raised its spam price of petrol in Abuja by 14.8% to 1,030 naira per litre from 897 naira. The latest price increase makes it the second time the petrol price has been hiked in the past month. The company had in September increased pump price from 615 naira per litre to 897 naira. Reports say the NNPC retail mega station in Abuja have affected the price increase. Motorists who are shocked lamented the continuing hardship in the country over instability in PMS prices. And to developments away from Nigeria, Turkey on Wednesday sent ships to evacuate around 2,000 of its citizens from Lebanon, with its Beirut envoy saying it would be the biggest evacuation of its type from the war-turned country. A Turkish diplomatic source said two naval ships carrying the evacuated nationals and their families would arrive at the southern Turkish port of Mersin in the early hours of Thursday morning. The two ships set sail overnight for the Lebanese capital, whose southern suburbs were hit overnight by fresh Israeli bombardments. Turkey, which is estimated to have 14,000 citizens registered with its consulate in Lebanon, announced the move on, Thursday, on Tuesday because of the deteriorating security situation on the ground in Lebanon. And in sports, Maduka Okoye has revealed Syria champions Inter Milan attempted to sign him from Indonesia over the summer. Okoye, however, said the Nerazzurri couldn't afford Indonesia's asking price. The rumors the Nigeria International could move elsewhere in January. The 25-year-old, however, said he is entirely focused on staying with the Zebras. On a sad note, the remains of Umar Shehu Idris, Prince of Zazo and son of the late immediate of the immediate late Amir Shehu Idris, has been laid to rest. The funeral prayers, led by Malam Balara Be Yahya Mukaddas was attended by people from all walks of life and performed at the Emir's palace in Saria. Umar Idris, who holds the traditional title of Dan Isan Zazo, was also the assistant secretary to the Zazo Emirate Council, died on Tuesday after a brief illness. The deceased had earlier lost his father, the 18th Fulani Emir of Zazo, Shehu Idris, four years back, while his mother, Habiba Shehu Idris, died 39 days ago. With that, we've come to the end of the news update on Trust TV at this hour. Remember, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentary. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for watching.